welcome to this video and in this video i'll be discussing the concept of stability analysis using the Lyapunov stability criterion the Lyapunov stability criterion. We first define a Lyapunov function. Given a function V of X, the function V of X is said to be a Lyapunov function if it emits the following properties. Property number one is that V of zero is equals to zero. Property number two is that V of X is greater than zero for all values of X not equal to zero. And as you can see, these two properties are the properties of a positive definite function. That means a Lyapunov function must first be positive definite. Property number three is that V of X is continuous and has continuous derivatives with respect to all components of X. That means V of X is continuous and also has continuous derivatives. Property number four is that the derivative of V of X is, equal to, is less than or equal to zero. If any function V of X meets the three properties, the four properties, property number one, V of zero is equal to zero, Property number two, V of X is greater than zero for all values of X not equal to zero. V of X is continuous and has continuous derivatives with respect to all the components of X. And the last property is that the derivative of V of X is less than or equal to zero. If a function meets those four properties, that function is called a Lyapunov function. In stability analysis using the Lyapunov stability criterion, it's good to note that if a Lyapunov function exists for any given control system, that system is stable. Conversely, for any given system which is stable, there exists a Lyapunov function for that given system. However, it's worth noting that the Lyapunov function of any given system is not unique. That means you can have different Lyapunov functions for the same given system. The process of determining a Lyapunov function, especially for an nonlinear system, may be quite difficult. It does not imply that because it is difficult to determine a Lyapunov function for an nonlinear system that a Lyapunov function for that system does not exist. And therefore, as much as it is difficult to determine a Lyapunov function or an existing Lyapunov function for an nonlinear system, it does not necessarily mean that a Lyapunov function does not exist for that given system. Therefore, in stability analysis using the Lyapunov stability criterion, we would wish to establish whether a Lyapunov function exists for any given system. And if it exists, then that system is stable. We proceed to analyze or carry out the stability analysis using the Lyapunov stability criterion.
the Lyapunov stability analysis. Consider a linear time invariant system defined by the derivative of x is equal to ax. This is our equation number one. And we define a Lyapunov function v of x in quadratic form defined by v of x is equals to x transposed px. And we call this equation two. We can obtain the derivative of v of x as follows using the chain rule. v of x derivative will be equal to x derivative transposed p x plus x transposed p x derivative. You can call this equation three. If we substitute equation one into three, then we can write equation three as follows. V derivative of X is equals to AX transposed PX plus X transposed PAX. If we factor out X transposed, we can write this as X transposed into A transposed P plus P A into X. And this is our derivative of V of X. Then we define, we define A transposed P plus P A to be equal to negative Q. And therefore our V of X derivative can be written as negative x transposed q x. For this equation to satisfy the fourth condition of a Lyapunov function given by the derivative of v of x must be less than or equal to zero, then we notice that the matrix q must be positive definite and therefore q is a positive definite matrix. Instead of specifying a positive definite matrix P and examining whether or not Q is positive definite, it becomes more convenient to specify a positive definite matrix Q and then work out through the equation of A transposed P plus P A is equals to negative Q to determine P. And once we determine P, we proceed to check whether P is positive definite. If P that is obtained is positive definite, then the system is stable. Usually we take the value of Q or the matrix Q to be an identity matrix of the same order as the order of the system, because we know by default, the, ident the identity matrix is a positive definite matrix. And therefore we choose the simplest positive definite matrix Q to be an identity matrix. Then working out through the equation A transposed P plus P A is equals to negative Q. We calculate the matrix P. If the calculated matrix P is positive definite, then the system is stable. And if the system is stable, there exists a Lyapunov function for that system defined by equation two, V of X is equals to X transposed P of X. It's good to note that when we are choosing the matrix P in our equation, then P must be real symmetric or P is taken to be a real symmetric matrix, Q to be an identity matrix, and then we proceed to calculate the matrix P. We check whether P is positive definite, and if P is positive definite, then the system is stable. If the system is stable, then a Lyapunov function defined by V of X is equals to X transpose PX exists for our given system. Let's put this into perspective in form of an example. 
For example, we are to determine the stability of a system defined by this equation, x1, x2 derivative is equals to negative five, negative four, two, one, x1, x2. We check whether the system defined by this equation is stable using the Lyapunov stability criterion. So we check whether this system is stable using the Lyapunov stability criterion. This system is a second order system. And therefore we define a matrix P which is real symmetric as P11, P12, P12, P22. It's good to note that our matrix A is the matrix negative five, negative four, two, one. The matrix A transposed will therefore be equal to negative five, negative four, two, one. We also choose Q to be an identity matrix of the same order as a system. That means a two by two identity matrix defined by one, zero, zero, one. Then using the expression Q or negative Q is equals to A transposed P plus PA, we calculate the matrix P and proceed to check whether P is positive definite. And if the obtained matrix P is positive definite, then the system is stable. Given then our matrices, we can compute the matrix P as follows. Our A transposed P plus PA is equals to negative Q can be written as follows. So negative five, negative four, two, one, that is A transposed, multiplied by the matrix P, which is P11, P12, P12, P22, plus the matrix P, which is P11, P12, P12, and P22, multiplied by matrix A, which is negative five, negative four, two, one is equals to negative Q, which is negative one, zero, zero, one. We can expand these matrices to obtain the following four or three set of simultaneous equations, negative 10 P11, plus four P12 will be equal to negative one. This is the first equation. The second equation will yield negative four P11 minus four P12 plus two P22 is equals to zero. This is equation two. And the last equation will be negative eight P12 plus two P22 is equals to negative one, our third equation. Solving the three sets of simultaneous equations, we obtain the values of our constants as follows. P11 will be equal to a third. P12 is equals to seven over 12. And P22 will be equal to 11 over six. Okay, those are our values. You can confirm by solving the set of simultaneous equations that this will be our values of P11, P12, and P22. That means our matrix P is defined as P will be equal to a third, seven over 12, seven over 12 and 11 over six. It's good to note that P11, which is equals to a third is greater than zero. P determinant will be equal to 11 over 18, subtract 49 over 144. And this will give us 
144, which is 88 minus 49, yielding 39 over 144. And of course, this is greater than zero. We notice that P11 is greater than zero and P determinant is also greater than zero. That means matrix P is positive definite. P is positive definite. And if the matrix is positive definite, then the system is stable. If the system is stable, then a Lyapano function exists for our given system defined by V of X is equals to X transposed P X. And in our case, our Lyapano function will be given by X1, X2 into the matrix P, which is a rad, seven over 12, seven over 12 and 11 over six multiplied by X1, x2 and therefore our system is stable since the obtained matrix p is positive definite and a Lyapano function exists for our given system defined by v of x is equals to x transpose p x equated to this expression and that is the Lyapano stability criterion used especially for nonlinear systems and in summary we establish whether a system is stable using the Lyapunov stability criterion by first determining the matrix P from the formula A transposed P plus P A is equals to negative Q. We always take Q to be an identity matrix of the same order as the order of the system. The matrix P is chosen to be a real symmetric matrix and using this expression, we calculate the matrix P. We proceed to test whether P is positive definite. And if P is positive definite, the system is stable. If the system is stable, a Lyapunov function exists for our given system defined by V of X is X transpose P X. And that is the Lyapunov stability criterion. Otherwise, thank you for watching this video. And that is the end of my discussion.